morning, everybody. How are you today? Good. It's good to be gathered again this morning, uh, Sunday morning. It's uh, another this in- intentional hour with the hour that goes with it for morning tea, a chance to, I guess, um, recharge, uh, to, to maybe bring what you need to to God this week. Um, whatever it is, as we gather today, let's, um, let's meet, whether we're online, whether we're in the room, uh, it's great to be here. If we haven't met before, uh, I'm the Reverend Graham Anson. I'm the minister here at Coromel Uniting, and I, I welcome you here into this space. Um, yeah, so whether you've come today with a, a lot of faith or just a little, um, whatever it is you've walked into the room with, whether life's a breeze or a struggle, um, whether it's been a good week or a tough week, we gather. We gather together in the name of Christ. Welcome to all. As we meet each week, we acknowledge country. So today, again, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we gather, the Dharawal people. We pay respects to elders past, present and future and extend that respect to all Aboriginal people and Torres Strait Islander people of this land. Lord, may your work be done in reconciliation and justice. I'm wondering whether there's someone who'd like to light our Christ candle this morning. Is there anyone for whom that would be an act of faith or hope? Or oh, Yes, Sharon, great, thank you. That's okay. That's all right. We often get first timers here. It's good. There you go. There you go. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you. For those who haven't met Sharon, Sharon uh, um, comes to ends meet with Lizzie, who's also at the back. Sharon, you're, you're um, now, are you, are you a pr- you're a proud, or it's Rodri, Wiradjuri, is that right? Your, your people, like your, your, your from Oberon. Oberon, yeah, so, yeah, that's right, yeah, good. Yeah. Fantastic, thank you, Sharon. So the words that come with us to the liturgy this morning are these. Um, Those who walk in darkness stumble. Those who walk in the light see a clear path. Jesus, let your light shine in us so we may know the way. Before we sing, I've got a note here from Judy Guns. Hello, Judy. Judy's um, touring England at the moment and tuning in each Sunday morning, so it's well, what, Saturday night for her. Great to have you with us, Judy. And she's in Brighton. Um, and she's saying, it's past my bedtime, so I may hope to stay awake. And um, Judy, the only difference will be that the snoring will be on the other side of the camera. It comes to sometimes there's snoring, snoring in the room, and some, not from you, of course, but, but sometimes there's a little bit of... Anyway, let's go. Let's, uh, we're going to sing. Let's stand together and sing the heaven shall declare. <laughs> I'm in real trouble now. <laughs>
seated. come to God in prayer and the prayer that, I, um, that I've put together for this morning, um, it has some basis in Psalm 130, which is our prayer, our psalm for this week. Let's pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer this morning for those of us from those of us who come with much to celebrate full of life happy glad able to count our blessings Lord hear our hearts sing hear our loud and resounding praises hear our unadulterated gratitude Hear us close to you. Lord, from those of us who come from the busyness or the ordinariness of life this day, this week, this month, who come finding it hard to fit everything in, or finding it hard to be clear about our reason or purpose. Lord, hear us. Hear us trying to hear you amidst all of the everything else. Hear us. Hear, knowing we need to be close to you. Lord, from those of us who come today with a heaviness, with grief or pain or an unexplainable burden, with unresolved issues or things we are trying to work through, Lord, hear our hope for life. Hear our acknowledgement of our need for forgiveness Hear our trust in you to get us through. Hear our whispers, our pleas. Lord, we wait on you. Hear our cries. Hear us seeking to be close to you. Lord, as we gather this morning, trusting in your steadfast love, by your spirit, and in Jesus' name we pray. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. Something we do each week is to pass the peace. So I'm going to invite you, if you are able, to please stand. taking some words from Paul this morning. Setting your mind on the spirit is the way of life and peace. May your mind be set on the spirit. May you know life. May you know peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Thank you. So I invite you from where you are just to turn to those around you and pass the peace.
right, I'm going to invite Laureen. We've had some rather long readings over the, the last couple of weeks and today's also another long reading. So, so buckle up, settle down, grab a cup of tea. Here we go. Thank you, Laureen. That side and that side. <laughs> Good morning. The reading this morning is from John 11, 45 verses. David made mention when he got 42. <laughs> now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother, Lazarus, was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, whom he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God might be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. <clears throat> Then, after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you were going to go there again. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he'll be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called to her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Mary had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Jesus came to where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came to her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upwards and, upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of crowds standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. For the word of God in Scripture for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, we give thanks. Thank you, Lorraine. Isabel, online too. Well, I've had a few thoughts about what I might preach about this morning during the course of this week. It's a passage that lends itself to a number of different avenues for exploring aspects of the faith. And I probably could have um, preached this morning about my lack of belief in the God who intervenes, who comes down like Superman, this confusion we have with Superman, that God suddenly stops bad things from happening. Um, I'm not saying God never intervenes, I'm just saying I don't believe in the Superman God who stops, who sort of comes from nowhere and stops bad things from happening to us. I could have um, preached a little bit about, and this is a, a classic kind of um, sermon thread on these kind of mornings, the God who brings life out of death, the God who resurrects or transforms. But instead today, I want to talk today, I want to talk a little bit about the God who weeps with us. in our midst and in our suffering, in our struggles, in our hardships. In our reading this morning, in a very brief retelling, Jesus is way out of the way. He's doing God's mission in another part of the world, like he's on the other side of the Jordan River. He's over where he got baptised. And um, the word of Lazarus's death comes to him. And it seems a little bit like there's a mix of maybe a little bit of indifference, a little bit of no, there's no rush, there's certainly no rush in Jesus' point. He stays another couple of days where he is doing what, what he believes God's calling him to be doing. Uh, there's conversations that go on with the disciples and the followers. And, uh, and you know, they, they're kind of saying, well, look, actually, we don't think going back to Judea, which is to, down to Jerusalem where, you know, the seat of religious power, we don't think that's a smart move right now. It's dangerous. And I just want to throw this little sidestep in. For those of you who believe the story in John 20 about Thomas being a doubter, go back and read that because you see what Thomas says when, uh, when Jesus says, you know, like when everyone else is discussing how dangerous it might, might be, Thomas says, let's go back with him and die there if we have to. There's no doubt in Thomas there. Anyway, so um, 
So Jesus waits. He discusses the danger. And he explains, this is what I must do. We, we need to go. The light, but walking in the light will always be the right thing to do. We don't have to fear. He gets to, to Bethany where, um, where Lazarus and, and Martha and Mary um, lived. And he, um, in the midst of the grief, he cries with the sisters over the death of their brother. And then as an act of the glory of God, resurrects Lazarus. I don't know how that passage of scripture speaks to you. And, and many of us as Christians are conditioned to move into a space of reason and, and, and um, the rationality of resurrection, of physical resurrection, and, and the foundation that may or may not be for our faith. But today I want to go a different direction. I want to start here, you know, in this place. Love is a foundation of our faith, right? And if I was to say to you that we're called to love one another, you basically know what that means. There's plenty of parts in the scriptures which unravel and share with us both the call, well, the call on our lives to love and what loving looks like or means. It's part of the staple diet for Christians. It's, it's the classic answer to everything. We're called to love. And, and while some of us stumble through that and have our own interpretations of what it means to love the Lord our God, to love our neighbour as ourselves, even our enemy if we have to, and to love ourselves, like, like whilst most Christians have some understanding of that, of this Judeo-Christian call, I've come to learn that not all Christians, not everybody in the world, that's for sure, have caught the Jesus concept of compassion. In the same way that many of us have vitamin D deficiencies or an iron deficiency or um, a logic deficiency sometimes, there are a lot of people who struggle with compassion deficiency. It's a massive deficit in our world. It's very rarely ever the starting point for major decisions on a worldwide scale. It's very rarely ever the starting point for decisions on a national scale. It was recognised that our previous Prime Minister required a compassion coach. He's a Christian man. And I'm not judging him for needing a compassion coach, at least he had recognised the problem. or well, someone recognised it for him. It happens in daily conversation. Amongst Christians, as much as anywhere else in the world, a compassion deficiency rears its ugly head quite regularly. Now, it may not be a problem for those people who struggle from it. It's easy to go on in your own merry little way, not recognising that compassion is an issue. But if we're serious about following in the way of Jesus, compassion has to come up as a conversation for us with some sense of regularity. For some people, it's a lack of desire. Life works really well the way it is. Why, would I, why do I need to see what life is working okay for me? The way the system works, the way the world works, works okay for me. I don't understand why other people have got a problem. So it's a lack of desire or a lack of appetite to change how things are because things are okay for me. It may be that I love my neighbour, whatever that means, 
I may even love my enemy, whatever that means. But don't ask me to try and step in the shoes of or try and understand why people might be downtrodden, grieving, struggling, experiencing trauma. Not my issue, not my problem. Unfortunately, in Christian world, we get pretty ugly at times when it comes to compassion, the lack of compassion. And in fact, whatever the other side of the coin might be, as you call it, whatever the opposite of compassion is, I mean, one, one I've ex- explained indifference. But I think it gets uglier than that. In Christian world, some Christians go into this Christian triumphalism. It's almost this sense of we're, 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 we're treading on everybody else. It's our right to. We have the answer. The rest of you are all going to hell. That's how ugly it sometimes sounds out of our mouths. Whether or not, even if we think we're couching it in, in better language than that, or we're wrapping it in a, you know, we're, we're, we're wrapping like you try and give your dog a pill, like, you know, you wrap it in something that they'll eat. Whatever it is, Christian triumphalism that doesn't start in a place of compassion can sound very ugly. Even worse is something that's growing in, in, the, in the world, um, in the inability to engage in meaningful dialogue across politics, religion, whatever it is. And for Christians, we, we sort of, there are many Christian people who have taken on a, Christ, a false victimhood as Christians. Now, again, I don't know how the language is couched as you hear it, but, but we have the right, and you are, interf- this is how the voice sounds, I think it sounds to me anyway, we have the right And in fact, you are interfering with our right. We have the right to expect or to enforce that the world be Christian. The way we understand it. We need you to uphold our values, our Christian values of judgmentalism, hatred and violence, if we need to. You think I'm joking? Just last week, here in Sydney, well, not in here in Sydney, in Sydney, on the other side of the, the escarpment, only, only about four weeks ago, at Pitt Street Uniting Church, this is the church, that they have a trans minister. And if you want your chance to really get yourself in a place where you don't really like my, my theology, I was, the, I was the person who led that JNC who called that minister into Pitt Street Uniting. It was the, one of the last things I did before I came here, was we called a trans priest minister to be the minister at Pitt Street Uniting Church. Something that Pitt Street Uniting Church has always done is to upheld, uphold um, the dignity of people who are anywhere on the rainbow spectrum the LGBTQI plus, they've always been there as not just supporters and solace, but also as advocates. And every Mardi Gras, they paint a lovely rainbow on their front steps. And this year, a group from a church out at Liverpool decided it was their right to come in and pour grey paint all over the rainbow and to interfere a service of worship and to call them all the ugly names under the sun in the name of Jesus. Last week, a gathering of of people from Pitt Street Uniting and other friends of theirs, people who are advocates for the trans community, went to run a peaceful protest outside the church that these other people, the people who had come from, they went to hold a peaceful protest. And the people inside the church came out, swore at them, punched them, dragged them by the hair and pushed them down the street. 
So if you think, if you think the Christian false victimhood doesn't exist, it certainly does. It comes out of the mouth of, of um, a lot of, of, of some very high profile Christian people. We have the right to enforce our Christian values on you. We have the right to speak horribly to you because you won't act the way we need you to. There's another way that a lack of compassion plays its way. And this is bigger than just Christianity. But colonialism often works in this way as well. When colonialism sounds like, this is ours, we'll do what we want, suck it up, get over it, go back home, go back to where you came from, or just forget about it, things aren't going to change, or don't come here in the first place, that's ugly. That is a total lack of compassion. Sometimes compassion comes across a bit more subtly than that in our personal interactions. It starts out in a place of judgmentalism or judging somebody for where they're at, either in their life circumstances and the, the things that might have got them to where they are. It might come across as me trying to fix you or fix things for you. It might come as trying to land on a technical fix for a very complex problem. If only you did this, if only you do that. It might come out in the words of tough love. It might come out as paternalistic helping. In other words, I'm going to help you and you will be helped and you will be affected but I will just continue to be me. Now, friends, you may not be able to see. You might think I'm sort of barking down the wrong tree, up the wrong tree, whatever. You might think I'm standing here just kind of launching a little too passionately about something that we just all should just be a little bit more quiet about. And that's okay. I don't mind. Whatever. But if at all I've woken you into something at all, my hope is that I'm just trying to raise, and you, may already, you might already be full of this. And if that's so, that's great. Keep going, please. The world needs more compassionate people. People whose starting point with others is compassion. But if, you're, if this is kind of going, okay, we'll get to a point. Help, help me understand what you're trying to say here. And my point is this, is if you're struggling with compassion, if it's something you know you want to be more awake to, if it's something you know you need a little more of, not just so that you'll be a better human, but so that you might be able to follow Jesus a bit more closely. Because that's what this passage of scripture we read about this morning has at the core and heart of what it is. It's compassion. There's not very many times in scripture, I can't think of too many, where someone stops and says, this is what compassion is. You have to see it and sort of dig a bit for it in there, but it's there over and over again, especially in the person of Jesus. So if you want to call yourself a follower of Jesus and you want to follow Jesus more closely, then learn how to start with compassion. And compassion, on the flip side of violence, or anger or hatred, or on the flip side of judgmentalism or fixing or paternalistic helping, compassion starts in a totally different place. Compassion starts with seeing and listening and identifying and meeting. The acting comes last. I don't want to claim to be a compassion coach. <laughs> but what I want to say is this, is that, is that we need more compassionate people. And in many ways we have to flip how our world works. If we're calling ourselves followers of Jesus, we have to flip how our world works. 
We need to be people who are much more prepared to see pain and grief and trauma in our world and not run away from it or not try and fix it. But rather to sit with those who are weeping and to weep with them because we are... Maybe it's not our lived experience, what they're going through, but at least having in an openness a starting point of saying, you know what, I can see why you might be crying here. In a moment, we're going to sing a song. It's a new song to us. It's a lovely song. We'll be singing this one on Good Friday. So if you like the song, I'm inviting you to come back for Good Friday for the service. But the song is called Behold the Cross. And it has this beautiful line in it that says, Behold the Cross. Um, Oh, sorry, I've lost the line. It's the third verse, anyway. And it starts, it has this line that says, um, uh, being prepared to bear the wound, to see the wounds, the wounds of Christ in those we meet. Are we prepared to see the wounds of Christ in those that we meet? That's compassion. It's Christ's compassion, it's, it's his joining with us in our humanity, in the midst of who we are. Our God is not a superman God. Our God is a God who suffers and weeps with us in the midst of our struggle and pain. Our God is a God who knows. And this song we're about to sing in a minute calls us into this space of seeing. Oh, yeah, I didn't plug in, did I, Steve? <laughs> um, friends, we're on the Easter journey. And our story reminds us that, the, that Jesus, the Lord, who weeps, also resurrects. But you see, our journey at Easter is not to the grave, it's through it. That's our journey at Easter. It's from death into resurrection. From suffering and pain into death into resurrection. And that journey, that's, I'll sort it out when I get this too. That journey and that struggle starts with weeping. It starts with people like you and I who are prepared to sit with others in the midst, with those who bear the wounds of pain, of trauma, of grief, of suffering, of sorrow, of hardship. That's when we're really joining in with the work of Christ in our world. When you and I walk this journey. But its starting point is not resurrection. Its starting point is weeping. That's the mark of a compassionate people. My friends, don't we need more compassionate people? Amen. As I said, we're going to sing um, a new song. It's called Behold the Cross. Now, I'll just give you a bit of a warning that the third verse is actually like a bridge. It has a different starting point. It goes in a different way with the tune. So um, there's four verses. Oh, it's the fourth verse. Carl, did I give you, did I give you four? I've, oh, I've only given four verses. Okay, I must have missed a verse there somewhere. It's the fourth, sorry. The bridge is the fourth verse, sorry. Sorry, I do, I apologise to everyone. Sorry, we're, I'm doing administration as I stand here now. That's my fault. Um, so, the, 
because the, the fourth verse is the bridge is a lovely little part. I want you to know it when it comes. And so um, each of the verses starts out with, Behold the cross of him who died. That's the tune. But the fourth one starts out with, Behold the cross. Da, da. Oh, I'm in the wrong key. All right, anyway. So, um, da, 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 da. All right? So that's how the fourth, the bridge first goes, and the bridge should, should be on the on the fourth, on number four. I hope that all makes sense. You'll pick it up as we go. Please feel free to stand. We're going to sing, and then uh, the first verse is just a repeat at the end. So, so you'll get to sing those words more fully when we get to the last verse. Let's stand together and sing. Behold the cross. On which was hung Life's very Lord God's only Son Mary's own babe So cold and so still Helpless before A Calvary Hills in His hand our church council welcome to worship uh, our new sheet has been produced again for us this week I'll uh, commit it to uh, your reading uh, there are a couple of things that I've been asked to simply highlight on the way through uh, first of all our our COVID recommendations uh, have been adjusted just a little bit so uh, we'd like to draw your attention to uh, the slight changes that are there and for considering how you will um, work those into our daily practices. Um, big ticket issue next Sunday we're having our congregation meeting here after our worship time um, at the revised mission plan has been approved by our church council and it is it needs to be presented to us as the congregation. So that's a, a big ticket item on the agenda uh, for the meeting. Uh, and we would invite all our uh, congregational members to take part um, in that meeting as part of the life of our church here at Coromel. Um, a big ticket item for next Sunday, of course, is that daylight saving ends. We're in autumn, so uh, we get to turn our clocks back one hour. 
um, sort of remember, spring forward, autumn back. So uh, um, enjoy the extra hour of sleep in readiness for joining us at worship. So that, that's a big ticket item. Uh, and Graham is also still... <laughs> Not so sure about that, David, but uh, David was asking if we can have recorded music for the people who were here an hour early, but uh, um, that was the purpose of the advance warning, I think. Um, Graham is seeking some extra readers for our Thursday evening service and for Good Friday. So uh, for those of us who are up to sharing in the gospel readings that take part in worship, if... Uh, if we can get in touch with Graham to, uh, to have that. Also, if people would like printed copies of the revised mission plan, if they can get in touch with John Bremner and Graham, um, today would be really good, um, then the, that is arrangements can be made available. So at that point, I'm going to hand back to Graham. So, thank you. Thank you, Brad. And just a little bit of late mail is I do have already with me 20 copies, hard copies of the mission plan. So if you want to take that home with you for the week, um, Mark Burns came in on Friday and printed off um, some copies. So let me know and I'll get them to you. So um, part of our life together, I'm sorry if you're, if you're visiting because uh, this is a bit of an insider's thing. Um, but uh, I'm, 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 actually, no, it's nice to have visitors with us. I don't want you to feel like... Um, but what I'm trying to say is, is that the next part of it might be a little bit... Uh, uh, anyway, doesn't matter. You know what I'm trying to say. So what we do each year, we, we just, well, we're meant to do it once a year as per our regulations. But I like to do these things because, because this is a chance for us to celebrate who we are and how, and how God's moving amongst us and the leadership and the, and the ministry that we exercise as a congregation. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through a few little categories. And so just so that we're not always standing up, sitting down, standing up, sitting down, I'm just going to ask you, um, when, when I call your category, just to put your hand up. And then at the end of each kind of category, I will um, get you to stand up and we'll give you a thank you. All right. So if you are an elder of our congregation, please put your hand up. There, I've got a few. Keep your hand up. Oh, sorry, I don't mean by age. I mean by if you're an elder. Um, we, we've got a... And, we're, we're, and all bar one, we've got our new photos on the back. So in terms of our church council, our new photos are up there. And, uh, and if, so if you are an elected elder, sorry, is what I should say, um, in, our, in our congregation, then you um, put your hand up just for a moment. And if you are a steward on church council, could you please put your hand up as well? So we've got a few. And then finally, if you are a pastoral carer, could you raise your hand? Right, okay, so we've got a few. So I'm going to ask you if you're able to please stand. I'm sorry, this is bad for your knees, I know, but um, there we go. Okay, so these are the people who are, who are part of our leadership in terms of our pastoral care and the decisions that we need to make as a congregation from month to month. Um, so thank you very much. I think we just give them a, a, how about, I think it might be appropriate for a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much. You can be seated. Some of you will be needing to stand again in a moment, so don't go too far. Um, all right, so I, I want to move on to our worship services now. Um, and I'm going to ask, um, well, can you, the guys at the back, I, I want to start with our sound and visual people because what they do for us each and every week is a real gift. And you have no idea the number of people who view online. Um, from week to week, who, who are no longer able to come to worship and are part of our life, participating on a weekly basis. And you have no idea, even though we sometimes struggle with the sound in the room, you have no idea what it would be like without it at all. So, uh, so thank you very much to Kyle and to Aaron, who I want to name them, and Andrew as well has a lot to do with our audiovisual stuff, so thank you. And I will get you to stand in a moment. I'm done, we, won't, we won't clap everybody but at the moment, but I just will go through some people. Um, I do want to name them musicians next, so, um, and I'm going to name them individually as, as we have them in the room. So, so Steve is, is, you know, Steve, stick when you put your hand up. Gail, who sings, leads us in singing, beautiful voice. Um, Rachel, who's not here today, but Rachel also leads us. David Harmon's here as well at the back, plays guitar with us. Um, and myself, I know you're all right, okay, yes, and me too. And, and Ron, where's Ron? He's not here, Ron's not here, but we've got, and Wench and when he leads with us, there's a few, and Brad, Brad sings sometimes, so there's a few of us. So put your hand up, if, just actually, how about just put your hand up, and that way I'll see who I missed, if anyone. Put your hand up if I've just named you. 
if I just named you. And the other Brad as well is not here. So there's a few, David as well. So, all right, thank you. Um, and put your hand up if you have preached at all in the last couple of years in this congregation, if you've been at the pulpit and led a homily. We've got a couple of hands, yeah. David, yours, there we are. All right, good. That's me too. All right. And, um, and what about those who have led a service? If you've been the leader of a service of worship? We've got a few. Put your hand up if you've read scripture at all in the last couple of years here from the front. What about if you've come and lit the Christ candle? Put your hand up. Thank you. What about if you've uh, served on communion? What if you've led the announcements? <laughs> if you've, um, and I, uh, Kyle, if you've set up for morning tea, if you've been someone who's set, Kyle does a lot of setting up out there. The tables get done every morning, every week now. If you've set up for morning tea, if you've, if you've prepared morning tea and if you've uh, served at morning tea, put your hand up for us all. Thank you. What if you've been someone who's taken, collected and counted the offering? Yep. Thank you. And uh, someone who's led prayers, if you're someone who's led our prayers. Yeah, thank you. And I think I've got everything, every kind of role. There's probably more, but I'm, and I apologise if I've missed something. But if I, if the flowers, of course. Sorry, that's what I missed. The preparation. I did. I had preparation of the room, and I meant the flowers as well, and I forgot. Narelle's not here, is she? But anyway, the flowers. Wonderful. So if it, if you at any point in time in that section of things put your hand up, I want you to please stand up. And we're going to clap you too. Thank you so much. Thank you for leading us in that way. All right, thank you. If in any way you've had any, anything to do with our children, so if you've, um, if uh, Judy, I know is watching online, Judy, you can put your hand up um, with Jam. If you've um, served at the, uh, served um, through the, the kids' table or um, done something else with our kids that I'm not aware of. Um, it could be anything. I, 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 there's probably things that I'm not aware of, so I, I'm making a broad stroke. So please put your hands up if you'd had anything in that regard. Thank you. And then um, anybody who's, who's, um, who's led or nurtured our young people. So if you've done something in particular for a young person in our congregation, I'd like you to put your hand up. Yeah, thanks, Kim. Yep, good, Steve. You probably should have your hand up too. When we, and we started to run um, our, our young f families' gatherings and that sort of thing. So I'm wondering if everyone who's had anything to do with that by participating in it, if you could put your hand up too. And I'm going to invite you if, you, if you've got your hand up at any point in time in that section since we last clapped, if you would please stand up. And we want to thank you too. Thank you. If, um, if you chair our property committee, could you put your hand up, please? There we go. Um, if you're a member of our property committee, could you please put your hand up? Yep, that's me too. And, um, and if you've ever done anything at all in the last couple of years that's, that's maintenance or you've seen a risk and you've done something about it, you've done a WH thing, if you've, done, if you, if you've been any part of that at all, in the, done maintenance or risk or anything, please put your hand up and please stand up. Everyone, let's stand up now. Yes, that's right. Thank you very much. It's often, it's often an unseen, and Mark Burns would be standing up if he was here too, because a lot of our risk and um, WHS stuff is sorted out and looked after by Mark, and he has done an amazing job in that, in that category, and I want to make sure that we don't forget that. All right, if you um, lead or a part, if, you're, if you lead a Bible study, if you lead one, we've got a couple of small groups around, so if, if, if someone's leading us a group, or thank you, um, if you're attending a Bible study, one of our Bible studies at all, or one of our groups, yet, yeah, all right, so can I get you all to stand, please? Thank you. You may be seated. Now, we do some uh, outward facing. We do quite a few outward facing things, and I, and I may not grab everything here, but I'm trying hard. So if you volunteer at our Living English classes, please put your hand up.
and John, you, I know John Bremner leads that, so we need to specially um, recognise that. But just put your hand up and keep your hand up if you can for a moment. If you're on the op shop committee, actually you can put your hands down or we'll go differently. Okay, so if you're on the op shop, if you're on the op shop committee, we have an op shop. If, you've got, if you're on the op shop committee, if you volunteer at the op shop at all, and if you um, have purchased anything from the op shop or donated <laughs> in the last 12, yeah, I have, all right, put your hand up, all right, yep, yeah, good, good, there's a lot more people now. Okay, great, let's all stand up. We need, um, yeah, let's all stand up, but living, so I'm going to do Living English and the op shop together, let's do that one, sorry, I, I'm, I'm not working as I should there, but thank you so much. We're going to thank you for the, for the hard work that gets done there. Thank you. Um, for anybody who helps out in the kitchen of ends meet, could you please stand up? Sandra in particular who leads that and anyone else who's helped out in making sure that we get a meal on a Wednesday. Thanks John, yes you need to stand up too, yes, there we go. All right. For anybody who's ever played music at ends meet, because you have no idea how beautiful the music is, it's wonderful. Come on Ruth, up you get, you've played music at ends meet. So stay standing. Sorry, I know I'm changing as I go, I'm really sorry. But, and anybody who's ever come to ends meet and come along with the goal of chatting to people or, or joining in, being part of things, and if, you're just a, if you come to ends meet, please stand up. Fantastic, we're gonna give you a round of applause, thank you. Um, time Out, if the people, I know Norell isn't here, but the people who are part of Time Out, could you please stand? Or put your hand up. There's a few number of you. Yes, all right. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Yes, Time Out's got a few. Thank you. That's, an, that's a really important part of who we are, Time Out. So thank you so much. Thank you. We're going to give you a little clap. Um, the person, can you put your hand up if you've got, if you lead or have part, part of the leadership of, of exploring our faith? So that's where we are now. Ken and John are part of that. Yes. And, uh, and if you've ever led a session at, at uh, exploring our faith, please put your hand up. David, you need to have your hand up here. David Goss. Yeah, there we are. He's, David's one of our key input people. There we go. Um, and then if you've attended at all, ever been, if your hand isn't already up. One of the beauties of exploring our faith is if you attend, you get asked to lead something. And it's really, really good in that regard. So thank you so much. We'll give you a clap. I won't make you keep standing up. All right, thank you. Um, for anybody who's ever helped out at one of our barbecues, so, so there is a couple that we've done. We've done community barbecues, we've done a family barbecue, and I want to also count Christmas Day in this as well. So if you've ever done anything to do with our, Chris, our barbecues or Christmas Day or um, Gail, you need to put your hand up. You've, you've been part of that, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody else who's got their hand down? Who's, so thank you to you. Yep, yeah, all right, brilliant. Um, um, men Shed, uh, uh, if you're... If you're Part of Men's Shed, please put your hand up. Yep, there's quite a few people not here today, unfortunately, but yes, the Men's Shed, good. Um, is there anything so far that you're aware of that I've missed? I think I got everybody, didn't I? And as you can see, I, I go to lots of places and people complain about the fact that it's the same old people doing the same old things, or it's the same people it's only a small number of people, but hopefully what you will have picked up is that we are a very active congregation and you have no idea how thankful I am for that. You've got no idea, well it's not even just about whether I'm thankful, you have no idea what a gift you are. Not just to the church, but to our wider community. There's one more I want to do, and that's this one, which is, have you ever been part of us meeting what we understand to be God's mission and God's call on our lives, which is to help build community and to grow connection for all? So have you ever done that either inside this building or out on the street or anywhere? Have you ever been part of a conversation? Have you ever met somebody where they're at? Have you ever displayed love or compassion in an odd place in the last two years? If so, please put your hand up. Come on, come on, more of you than that. Come on, we know, we do it. Hopefully it's the DNA of who we are. If you've ever, ha you've never had a conversation on the street with anybody that's been a compassionate, I'm sure you have. If your hand's down, I know you are people who, who this is what our mission is about. It's about meeting people where they're at. It's about us growing community. It's about growing connection. So friends, I'm just going to lead a prayer of thanks for our leaders 
and for those who will participate. Let's, um, let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you for those who you bless and co-mission with, with all those people, with all of us. We give, thank you, give thanks for those who lead and who serve. We, might, we pray that we might continue to know your spirit leading and guiding us in your mission in our world and as we and they live out your call to love. Be with us all living out your mission of love in the world. Might our church be a beacon of your love because we choose to be a people who serve and love all people, all of your creation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I'm going to hand back over to Brad who's going to lead us in our prayers today. Thank you, Brad. Let's come before our God in prayer. Father God, during this season of Lent, we reflect on the blessings provided to us in our country, even in hard times, and the challenges experienced by so many in this community and in other places. Again, Lord, we pray for the people of Ukraine, the people of Somalia, and the constant stress of the Middle East. We ask again for peace to quell the fear and loathing that so readily becomes weaponized, diverting aid from people to warlords. As we acknowledge the blessing of peaceful elections to renew our governments, we uphold before you the many in our community cast to the sidelines to suffer homelessness, financial stress and barriers to proper health care. We pray for a fresh enabling of local and regional organisations, government, church and private, to prioritise and act together to restore these needs and to bring hope. We pray for our congregation here, our ministry leaders and volunteers, as we seek to respond to your leading for this community. Remind us that as your people, we are called by your example to offer grace, compassion and peace in small ways and bigger ways as you enable us. We bring before you in prayer those known to us who are struggling with illness, grief and many concerns. And we focus our thoughts on you as we move towards Easter, Lord, Redeemer, Saviour and Guide. Amen. Oh, yes. Thank you, Judy. That's, oh, gosh. I missed someone in really important. Thank you, Judy. Thank you that you're still with us. Um, the person who, Wayne, uh, uh, Wayne, I, I'm, I'm presuming, Wayne, you might be, hopefully you're with us. And Wayne, I'm so sorry. Um, the news and notes, I, I, I want to make special mention of this. I know John's also part of making news and notes happen. And, uh, and news and notes, we, we're very blessed to have the news and notes news sheet we have. As I share so many times, I've been part of in, I've been in consultancy roles in the church. I've, been, I've visited a number of congregations. You have no idea. And the number of people who complain there's no commu not enough communication, we could never complain about that in our congregation. Wayne, you do a wonderful job of making sure we get news and notes and we get informed and we, 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 know, um, we know what's going on uh, well in advance. The information is always, you know, just 99.9% .9 accuracy. And so, Wayne, we want to thank you. Um, I'm, I'm, thank you so much, Wayne. I, I <laughs> I'm so sorry. All right. Um, we are going to finish with a song called Heal Me, O God. It's a song we have sung before. It's, a, it's got a nice rhythm and feel to it. And uh, it's a song about healing, which in some ways is, you might be able to connect with this song where your point of healing is today. Let's stand together and sing.
God, we give thanks for your goodness in our lives. It comes in so many different ways. And so, Lord, we are, yeah, God, we're just so thankful. Um, We pray that the gifts that we bring, the gifts of our time, our money and our lives will be used for your work and your glory in our community, in our nation, in our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Judy's on fire, and the other person I have forgotten is Christine Wales, who does our web page. Christine isn't here this morning, but we'll make sure a thank you gets to Christine. Thank you. <sighs> yeah, thank you, Judy. All right, so here we go. I'm going to finish up with our final commissioning and benediction. My friends, go forth in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Honour all people. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Help the afflicted. Support the weak. And in so doing, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.